Hi, this is Kevin Deal from Upscale Audio, and today we're going to talk about the Western Electric 300V. We're going to talk about the Western Electric 91E. That amp is off the hook. What makes me think about that? These speakers behind me. Look at this. That's a Tannoy Kingdom Royale. Hell yeah, I'm rolling with a Tannoy shirt. And this is the Clips Jubilee. Look at this. If you buy them and then if you die when you own them, they can bury in them. You remember that movie, right? So, oh my God, look. I've been in the Western Electric space for many, many years, many years. Back in the day, we used to go to the TRW Ham Fest back in the 90s, I guess the early 90s or before that. And uh, we'd get out there, I'd have to leave at 4 a.m., get there with a flashlight on the hopes of trying to find one Western Electric anything or just find some tubes. Then we'd go out breakfast, swap stories with other tube heads. And I mean, it was really, really a lot of fun. But I never found a single one at that flea market, electronics flea market, ever. I'm going to tell you a really quick story. Uh, somewhere around 1995, I'm going to guess, I was on my way with my wife down to a hotel in Newport Beach for our anniversary. We were going to go and have a nice romantic weekend at a hotel at the beach. And we're driving down there on the 55, rolling into Costa Mesa, and I'm like, there's a disturbance in the force. I don't know. I mean, I can sense tubes. I can sense them. And I look over and there was an old TV repair shop. I thought, man, that's on Costa Mesa Bullet. That's on the 55 where it dumps in. I mean, people, look, all these old TV stores have been checked by then. You know, I mean, they'd already been gone through. But I don't know why I had to stop. I asked my wife, can I? She goes, sure. So I go in and I go, hey man, you guys got any old tubes laying around? And the guy goes, oh yeah, we got a bunch of them. You know, we were just about ready to throw them out. And I go, really? I go, what do you got? And he goes, well, I got these up, up here. And they were facing back behind him. There was like a, an overhead thing facing that way. I'm like, what? So I jump up on the counter and I climb over and I get my head and I look up and my eyes were that big. Western Electric 300 Bs, Western Electric 300 As, uh, Amperex Bugle Boy, Metal Base, EL34s, brand new in the box with a cake of dust like that thick on the box, never been touched since the 1950s, I'm guessing, right? I'm like, oh my God. I go, my wife's going to kill me. I said, okay, I'll come back on Monday. Is that cool? He goes, oh yeah, whatever. I go back out to the car. I told my wife and I look at her, I go, eh, eh. she goes, go ahead. So I go back in, I make a deal. <clears throat> I got these tubes. We went to our romantic hotel. But I made it up to her because I was rocking and rolling all night long. All night long, I was getting out of bed, going over to this cardboard box, going through it, because I couldn't believe it. I'm like, uh, and this is one of the tubes. This is one of them. I kept one of them because this will never happen again. You know, and I'd open it carefully with a, you know, and then I just, oh my God, you know an original new old stock <clears throat> Western Electric 300B. So look, I was into Western amps, you know, and blah, 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 back then and dealing with guys from Japan and <clears throat> Korea because, you know, over there, Western Electric is God, just like, you know, Tanoi is God, right? To the people in uh, Japan and Korea. I mean, that's just it, right? So Charles Whitener had the, the vision and that's the thing about him. He had a vision to bring back Western Electric with the original greatness. And that was a lot of work over a lot of years, trying to get to deal with the people at Westrex, but he achieved that. And he managed to carve out a small space at a Western Electric factory to fire up the tube works again. And they did that. And he had access to the machining. He had access to the engineers, metallurgy and everything. And they made amazing tubes. I still have some of those tubes stashed away because when they stopped making them, um, 
at that factory, I thought they would never start up again. And I just started grabbing everyone I, every one of them I could and I stopped selling them, right? And I still have some of those. But he did start it up again because he was cut loose. He managed to work something out where he was no longer tied down, I guess is the best way to put it, with only doing things the way they were done if he could find a better way to do it. And he did that. And these are minor changes, but oh my God. God, what they did has made the best 300B ever. And are they inexpensive? Of course they're not. But when you think about it, and you think about a 40,000 hour life and a five year warranty, they are worth it. Look, five year warranty and a real one, like I got a five year warranty on this battery in my car, you know, and it failed after four years. I said, okay, uh, we're here to get a new battery. They go, okay. It's prorated, you have credit for $1.79 or something like that, right? No, the warranty on this tube is a five-year warranty. If it fails, they give you a brand new tube. Now the warranty doesn't start over again, of course, but you get a brand new tube and look at this tube. I'm gonna tell you what they did. Oh, look at the paperwork. This is a match quad, right? And they are actually plate curved match. This is the card for this tube. These are the characteristics for this tube. Oh my God, I love it. And when you see the tube, oh, oh I gotta tell you, man, I'm just sporting wood right now. I mean, <clears throat> first thing I did is tubes need to have a high vacuum. The Svetlana, the SED 6550C, everybody loved that tube, they loved it. But the ones they made in the last year or two were a disaster and about 25% of them would fail. And the reason from what I understand from people that know is because they could not get a good vacuum. Something had happened with their equipment. And so uh, you don't have a high vacuum, you're gonna have a high failure rate and that's what occurred. Uh, in fact, I have probably 100 or 200 of those tubes in the back, but one out of four may fail. So they used to use uh, something that was called a, um, oh, it's a diffusion pump. And diffusion pumps were really good for evacuating the tube, but they didn't give you the highest vacuum. Now they use something called a turbo molecular pump. And it's all about giving this tube a really, really good, good vacuum. Something else they did is improve the plate. And they did by that by adding a uh, one micron um, coating of carbon. <clears throat> and te technically the material that they use that's called graphene, I don't know much more about it from there. I'm gonna be going to the factory pretty soon and I'll let them uh, explain it to me when I get there. And then lastly, and most importantly, is they improved the heater. And what's important about that? This is a directly heated tube. So that little thing that's glowing, that's called a heater. Usually a heater warms up a cathode, but in a 300B, the heater is the cathode. So the coating is critical. And the result is a tube that's quieter with a blacker background and a shimmer to beat the band and a tube that is so musical. So whether or not you have a a Western Electric 91A amp, which uh, the 91E, uh, or any other uh, 300B amplifier, you're gonna get an improvement in sound in a tube that's gonna last longer. I gotta hand it to these people. Go to our website. We try to keep these in stock, singles, pairs, quads, at all times. We do our very, very best. But again, this is not a hamburger tube, but look. Go to our website, talk to our non-commissioned salespeople. I want you to know something. At Upscale Audio, and I mean it when I say this, we are going to treat your system like it's ours. Thank you.